Welcome to my spoiler discussion for Star Wars The Last Jedi. It is upon us. I do have a spoiler free review for The Last Jedi, so you can check that out. I'll put the link in the description below. But fair warning, if you have not seen The Last Jedi and you don't want to be spoiled, do not watch this video because I am going in depth on the things I liked, things I didn't like, all the stuff I talked about in my review, I'm expanding upon it in here. The Last Jedi and you're watching this, welcome. If you haven't seen The Last Jedi and you don't want to be spoiled, this is not the video for you. I'm gonna reiterate that. Let's talk The Last Jedi in depth. Ah, oh, saw it again. Still my favorite in the saga. Yeah, I saw it twice in two days. Total nerd. The thing I want to start with is Supreme Leader Snoke because he's ultimately a waste. Supreme Leader Snoke is now dead necessarily have a problem with Supreme Leader Snoke being dead and Kylo Ren killing him and therefore Kylo Ren is the new Supreme Leader. I think that that's really cool. It's just the fact when Kylo Ren slices him in half with Rey's lightsaber and Supreme Leader just falls over and dies after he gets cut in half. It's just it's very unfulfilling and very underwhelming and here is why. If you go back and watch The Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams really kind of set up Snoke to be the main bad guy and the one that Luke Skywalker and the Resistance would probably have to fight in Episode 9. He's dead now in here, in Episode 8, which I didn't expect. I did not expect Supreme Leader Snoke to die in Episode 8. I thought maybe at the beginning of Episode 9. I thought they would stretch it out to Episode 9. My thing is this. We know nothing about Supreme Leader Snoke. Who is this guy? What are his motivations? Basically, he's just a Emperor wannabe. Did he become, like, basically a more fucked up version of Two-Face? How did the First Order rise from the ashes of the Empire? Questions that I feel like have to be answered and they're never going to be fulfilled because now he's dead unless if he somehow turns up in Episode 9. I find that highly unlikely. i complaints, too, that this scene with Snoke, Rey, and Kylo is basically a ripoff or an exact copy of the scene from Return of the Jedi with the Emperor, Vader, and Luke. I mean, yeah, it didn't bother me, though. Uh, I, j I thought it was more of a cool throwback to Return of the Jedi rather than copying it. But, I mean, I can see where people will make that parallel and will draw the line there. However, Kylo Ren is the Supreme Leader. That's rad. It's a huge character arc for Kylo Ren, and I love when he's tempting Rey to be his apprentice, and he she basically just blows him off. Kylo Ren means business. I thought that scene was funny too where Kylo Ren's unconscious on the ground and then Hux comes in and Hux is ready to take out his blaster and kill Kylo Ren so that he can be supreme leader and then when Kylo Ren wakes up he puts his blaster away. I don't even think he takes it out. I think he's about to and he tucks it away in his cloak. That was funny. Basically the humor scenes that worked in the movie involved Hux because there's one at the beginning with him and Poe. He's got Poe on the comm system and po Poe's like fucking with him and Hux doesn't even realize it. It's actually pretty funny. The scene however where Kylo does kill Supreme Leader Snoke, best lightsaber scene ever put on screen in a Star Wars film. You just see Kylo and Rey back to back with their lightsabers just taking out Snoke's Praetorian guards. Ah, jaw-dropping stuff, guys. Jaw-dropping stuff. This was one of the moments in my review when I said that there were jaw-dropping moments in this movie. This is one of them. This is easily my favorite scene in the entire movie. It was just so cool. Just the choreography, the way it was written. It's filmed, too, because it looks like it's going to start off as like some slow-motion scene, and then it goes into the regular, you know, fa regular fast-paced stuff. It's just, it was just a wonder to behold. I, I sat there in the theater at that scene. I'm like, they're going all John Wick on people right now. Awesome. I'm going to talk about another storyline now, and that is the storyline of Finn and Rose, because this is where a lot of people are just like, eh. This is the section of the movie probably everybody's going to complain about. This is honestly, and I noticed this on rewatch, it bothered me a little bit when I saw it yesterday, bothered me more today, not so much as a scene I'm going to talk about in a minute, but this is the storyline where people are just going to tune out. You have to take a piss, and this is honest, honest opinion. You have to take a piss or a shit during this movie. Anytime it cuts back to Canto Bites, 
just go do it. You're not missing anything. I can tell you that. I mean, Benicio Del Toro comes in. Del Toro's not really needed. This whole storyline is just... I can tolerate it because it's in a Star Wars movie, but it doesn't belong in a Star Wars movie. Just filler to get Finn to do something. Ah. However, I can tolerate it because it's in a Star Wars movie. It's probably going to bother me more and more, though, each time I watch The Last Jedi. Not like it's awful, it's just this part of the story isn't that good. However, what I can't tolerate involving this storyline is that stupid scene where Finn and Rose are riding on the back of the giant ass goat and they're being chased by the Cantabanto police whatever the hell the planet's called tipping point for this part of the story and for the character of Rose for me for me this was honestly it felt like a prolonged commercial for awareness of animal cruelty that's what it felt like this scene also belongs in a Harry Potter movie not a damn Star Wars movie movie then, I love the battle scene on Crate during the third act. It's just, when it ends and when it gets towards the end, Finn is going to sacrifice himself in a cannon. Yeah, there's a cannon. Of course there's a cannon. When towards the cannon, it's actually this really, it sets it up to be this really emotional scene because you see Finn's going to sacrifice himself and you've grown to love Finn as a character. You don't want to see him die. Plus, the resistance keeps losing all their fighters, there's only like four people left at the end of this movie in the Resistance. But then Rose tries to sacrifice herself too. She knocks Finn out of the way. Her scrap of heap gets hit. They both crash and then she kisses Finn. I'm like, I don't think he's that interested in you. His mind is definitely elsewhere. It's obvious Finn wants to bang Ray. His first line in the movie is, where's Ray? And when she did that, I thought to myself, well, this is cheesy and unnecessary. We're dealing with cheesiness in a Star Wars movie and made in 2017. Uh, I can pinpoint this is one of the aspects of the movie where people are going to be like, this isn't Star Wars. Like, fuck this shit. What is this? I'm out. Big scene that's gonna be the tipping point for everybody though is when Leia is pushed off the ship and she's floating in space and then she uses the force to pull herself back onto the ship and it looks like she's flying in space. People are going to lose their shit over that scene. Everybody's going to say Princess Leia is now Superman. This is gonna be a divisive Star Wars film guys. Nobody's gonna like a lot of the content in this movie and that's one of the scenes. However, if you do feel like she is flying, trust me, I think, in my opinion, you're overstretching a little bit. This is literally the first time in the entire saga we get to see Princess Leia use the Force. So I don't get why people are complaining she's flying, because she's not flying. Just let her have this one. And speaking of Princess Leia, really interested and intrigued and curious about what they're gonna do with Leia in episode nine because Leia survives. Carrie Fisher is dead. This film already said they're not gonna digitally recreate her for episode nine, so I mean, they gotta do something. I mean, whether you're mentioning it in the opening crawl or you just have a brief funeral for her at the beginning, you gotta do something. I mean, I don't know what they're gonna do. That's gonna be, that's gonna be hard for them. Uh, and it's gonna be really interesting to see what they come up with in terms of what Leia's gonna do in Episode 9. Shifting gears, I really like the Force connection between Rey and Kylo, and I like how it was Snoke psychologically messing with Kylo. Snoke connected them to the Force, and they can, like, see each other in each other's environments, and then they can reach out and, like, touch each other. That was weird, but it was really interesting. Now let's talk about the man of the hour, who somehow I haven't talked about yet, and that is Luke Skywalker. He is in the movie. Yes, he's in more than 20 seconds of the movie. He's in a good chunk of this movie. I love where Luke is in this movie. It's just so different from the original trilogy. So unexpected. He's a tortured human being. Feels the guilt of being a failure and nothing, nothing in this movie. Other than that sweet ass lightsaber fight, but this scene might be even better. Nothing will ever be as satisfying as Yoda as a force ghost popping up and giving Luke advice. Luke tells Yoda he's gonna burn the Jedi text and Yoda just tells him, mm, 
Red Deer Mayview. Page turners they are not. Ah, Yoda giving advice. I love Yoda. It's really interesting. The scene gets you thinking because Force Ghost Yoda burns down the tree that was holding the Jedi texts. So Force Ghosts can interact with the environment. It's here in the movie where I feel like Luke just kind of goes away for like a good like 30 to 40 minutes and then he comes back. But it's not the Luke that we see throughout the whole movie. He's got his hair trimmed, his beard's a little darker, his hair's a little darker. He whips out a blue lightsaber and he and Kylo Ren are about to fight. And I will say this, this is the first movie in the Star Wars saga that does not have a lightsaber fight. That's gonna piss people off, but it's here where you learn that Luke isn't actually Luke. It's a fake Luke, and Luke is controlling this Luke from the island. I kind of have a problem with this, because you're telling me for the whole movie, Luke doesn't leave the island. The real Luke, that is. He's just chilling on the island the whole movie. My problem here isn't the fact that Luke is using the Force here, and it really introduces new aspects of the Force we have never seen before. It's the fact that Luke's just chilling on the island. Like he has the whole movie. He doesn't move a single inch. I like the first two-thirds of the movie where the Resistance is just chilling in space before they go to Crate. And I love the shot in the movie where Luke looks at the two sons after he falls from con after he's done controlling the fake Luke. He falls on the rock, he falls over, gets back up, he looks at the sons on the island. And it's very reminiscent of that iconic scene from A New Hope when he is outside of his home and he is looking at Tatooine's two sons. It is very reminiscent of that. And then, as the music plays, the... <laughs> Luke Skywalker gives himself up to the Force. He is now in peace. And he dies. Yes, Luke Skywalker dies. That's actually something I was hoping they were going to say for Episode 9, because I never got to see Luke Skywalker light up his green lightsaber and start wrecking house. I never got to witness it on the big screen. The interesting thing here is, though, is that Luke was the last Jedi. He no longer is or was. Rey is the last Jedi. But that might not even be true, because the final scene of the movie goes back to Canto Bite where you see a kid use the Force to pull a broomstick and he looks up into the stars. I don't know if that's trying to lead into Ryan Johnson's trilogy that Disney assigned him to do, or if he's setting it up for an Episode 9. I really don't know if J.J. Abrams is going to follow through with that on Episode 9. I'm really intrigued to see what J.J. is going to do with Episode 9. Um, but it also shows you that there could be more Jedi out in the galaxy. That Rey is going to have to train because she's got the Jedi text now. It's really, really interesting. That I didn't pick up on that the first time I saw it. I picked up on that today when I saw it again. And it really got me thinking. If there's more Force users in the galaxy, there's got to be the chance that they could be Jedi. And this kid could be a Jedi. This ends my spoiler discussion. That's my spoiler discussion for The Last Jedi. There's probably a couple things I missed I'm sorry I didn't talk about them. Had a lot to talk about in terms of The Last Jedi. And spoilers, Last Jedi is going to be a divisive movie. I can already tell you that. I've seen all the hate so far for it on Twitter. The audience score on Rotten Tomatoes is pretty bad. That's unfortunate because this is my favorite Star Wars movie in the saga. I love how this movie is so different. And I think people wanted it to be more like The Force Awakens, like kind of the same thing, even though people complained that The Force Awakens was the same thing as A New Hope, and I didn't see it that way. Walk out of the theater really, really happy, somewhere in the middle, or just totally pissed off. I think over time, this is going to get a reputation for being one of the better Star Wars movies, and I really hope it does, because it's a really different, unique, ambitious, risk-taking Star Wars movie. Sure, there's some stuff that doesn't work, like the whole Cancel Bites part, but, I mean, I don't understand the hate for this movie. You're saying that this is the best one in the saga? That's just me. That's just my opinion. You're welcome to form your own opinion. Thank you for watching my spoiler discussion of The Last Jedi. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. I'll leave those links in the description below. If you're on YouTube, subscribe at the end of this video. Check out some other videos I have done. I will see you next time.